In 1976, 10,200 refugees from Laos who had fled across the border into Thailand were admitted to the United States. Some of these immigrants were Hmong and now grown to be elders. In December 1975, the United States agreed to begin resettling the Hmong in America, and Congress admitted 3,466 individuals. The tragedy of the Hmong is dedicated to understanding the Hmong elderly in the United States and the tragic events that brought them here. Few people know their history, their role in fighting for the U.S. in the Vietnam War, and the challenges they face now. The Hmong elderly have a story of courage and suffering that the world needs to know. My name is Bi Bang Mo, and uh, currently I am the director of the Hmong Language Program at the University of Minnesota. And I also do a lot of uh, different community work uh, with you know different Hmong organizations and things like that too. But above all, and I think what's really essential about the elderly is, is that um, they carry with them um, all of our history, all of our culture, our heritage, our tradition, um, and we don't really understand how vital they are to understanding who we are because so much of Hmong uh, traditions and history has been through oral traditions and we don't yet have many things written about our own people. So they are, you know, the elders that we have with us today um, are our direct lines to who we are. Elder people are highly respected and it's expected they will be taken care of by the younger generation. In the U.S., the contributions elders can make to their families is based on their relevant life experiences that change from where they were in Laos. I think the biggest struggle for them are, um, you know, issues of depression, and I think the depression doesn't come from just the self, but the from uh, traumatic loss of country, loss of family, um, from you know being a refugee, from the experience of war and warfare, um, and then just the intergenerational differences of their kids growing up here in the U.S and them being parents and then suddenly being you know, children themselves. So there are so many different aspects of their lives that causes you know, depression for them. Elders may be less respected and feel depressed about their lesser place in the family. Increasingly, the elders are placed in nursing homes as families are not able to take care of them and meet the demands of society. If I see the elders out in the community, whether it's at the Hmong New Year or at the flea markets or you know at the zoo or wherever, um, I'm happy uh, because that means that regardless of how their day or their year may be or um, whether they do have depression or not or whatever is going on in the household, that they are actually getting out there or that their kids are taking them out there and they're enjoying you know their day and uh, relaxing. So I feel happy when I see the elders out and about. Um, you know, the best way that I have found to be very effective is just to listen to them when they have something to talk about, even though we may feel that, oh, they are just complaining, uh, because we have different, um, you know, 
social skills and so we feel like when the elders talk they are just complaining and so we forget to really listen to what their inner problems are and what the deeper issues are so I feel like the biggest um, thing for us to do and the most effective is to really listen to them and to really just take time out of our day uh, to sit down and ask them find out how they are doing um, and find out if they need something <laughs> I believe that the best way to give back is in oneself to really become um, the dream that our elders, our grandparents and our parents have really brought um, us here as refugees um, dreaming a better life for us. So I feel like the best way to give back and to say thank you to them is to be successful um, and you know thrive in school and education and to just validate by uh, letting them know that we appreciate all of that and that we know of the hardship that they've gone through and that we know what they want for us um, and that's to be successful so they can see that their kids are independent and that um, should they become dependent on us you know they'll be happier about you know us growing up and being on our own the best way definitely is to reach back to our parents our grandparents and really communicate with them um, as a teacher of a language class, a language curriculum, regardless of what language we speak or that we're learning Spanish, French, Chinese, um, you know, two to four years, even five, six years in language classes, you can't really be fluent. And if you're fluent in the language, you're not really fluent in the culture. It doesn't mean that you, you are fluent in the culture and the people. And so the best way is uh, to retain culture and traditions or to learn uh, about the deeper meanings of heritage um, is to speak to the elders and to learn about their values and their experiences um, and to speak to them in the heritage or the native language. Mm -hmm. And when you start doing that, you will hear many um, more vocabularies that you do not learn at school. And that's how you're going to learn the enriched part of a language. Communicate with your Hmong elders in the community, whether it's your parents or grandparents, and learn from them our traditions and culture in order for us to teach our children that when we become the Hmong elders ourselves.